so now we move on to the next important standard function known as the greatest integer function this greatest integer function is denoted by box x now let's see what a greatest integer function is let's assume that x is a real number now you know that a real number can be represented on a number line so this can be a real number this can be a real number this can be a real number so you see that a real number lies between two integers it always lies between two integers so i can write that x lies between and this equality sign holds when x is itself an integer if x is 2 then this i is, is 2 so you see that x lies between two integers so given a real number if i am given a real number I can find the two integers between which the number lies. For example, if, if I am given 1.5, I can say that 1.5 lies between 1 and 2. Also, if I am given minus 1.5, I can say that minus 1.5 lies between minus 2 and minus 1. That means, given any real number, we can always find an integer i so that the given real number x is always greater than, than or equal to i. If I am given any real number, I can always find an integer i such that x is just greater than that integer. Or you can say I can always find for given a real number I can always find i such that this condition holds. Now that integer i is called the greatest integer function. So box x is nothing but i. Now let's say I give you minus 2.5. Okay. Now what is i? To find i, I need to find an integer in the proximity of minus 2.5 such that minus 2.5 is just greater than that integer. What is that integer? That integer is minus 3 in this case. Okay, so I can say that box of x is minus 3 when x is minus 2.5. Similarly, if I take 2.5, then, then the greatest integer is 2. Because 2.5 is just greater than 2 and less than 3. Okay, so this is box function. Now, similar to box function, we have something called fractional part of an integer, uh, fractional part of a real number. Now, when I say fractional part, what comes to your mind? When I say fractional part, you think of fractions like 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4. You think of a real number or a rational number of the form p by q such that the fraction lies between 0 and 1, right? Because when you think of fraction, you think of something in the form of a numerator and denominator which is in between 0 and 1, okay? That is how you have been taught what a fraction is. Now let's see what a fractional part of a real number is. The fractional part is denoted by this with curly braces and we write this as x minus box of x. Okay, this is how a fractional part is defined. Okay, now you know that x, if I have x and if I have box x, you know that x is always greater than or equal to box of x. This is because if 
x is an integer then box s x is equal to x if x is not an integer to find box x i will take the integer which is less than x but is the greatest integer which is less than x so this condition is always true okay now let's say i have a real number x here i have integer here i have an integer here this is i plus 1 this is i minus 1 this is i and this is i minus 1 this is what this is box x right this is how we define the greatest integer function now you see that this i this is x x minus 1 will lie somewhere here so you see that box x lies between x minus 1 to x okay box x is i so i lies between x minus 1 to x from here now let's take the negation of this sorry let's take the negation of this that means what i mean is just multiply with the minus sign so if i multiply with the minus sign this extremities gets interchanged so i'll have this minus of box x less than 1 minus x now add x to all the three parts then i'll get 0 here i'll get x minus box of x less than 1 what is this this fractional part of x so you see that fractional fractional part of a real number lies between 0 and 1 now let's see what fractional parts of positive real numbers is what fractional part of a negative real number is let's say i have a real number 2.7 okay this is x what is box of x box of x is 2 what is fractional part of x for finding the fractional part is what it's defined like x minus box of x so with in this case it's 0.7 so you see in case of positive real numbers the fractional part is just this thing whatever is after after the decimal that becomes the fractional part but if i take a negative real number let's say minus 3.3 box x in this case is what is minus 4 and the fractional part is what minus 3.3 .3 minus of minus 4 so it becomes 0.7 again okay so in case of negative real numbers the fractional part is 1 minus whatever is after the decimal point then after the decimal point, point i have 0 0.3 so the fractional part is 1 minus 0 0.3 that is 0 0.7 in this case also you can see that if you have add the fractional part with the greatest integer function you get the real number itself okay so this is how the greatest integer function is defined now let's look at some of the basic properties of the greatest integer function and the fractional part